Will Lady Gaga receive her first golden man? Can the expressive acting of Rami Malek beat the charm of Viggo Mortensen? And the hottest matter, do the nominees for the best picture have any chances to win over the biggest surprise of the award season, the Green Book? We are here to unravel the ceremony's mysteries and prepare you for the crazy Oscars race. Nominees for Best Actor The buzz over the 91st Ceremony Award became even bigger after Kevin Hart stepped down as the host, creating massive speculation that this time the Oscars will stay hostless. Anyhow, with or without a host, the show must go on and thus, the nominees for the Best Actor must enthusiastically rehearse their acceptance speech in front of the mirror. Rami Malek in Bohemian Rhapsody is the one who seems to have the best chance, since the Actors Guild recognized his work as the best male actor in a leading role. Taking on the role of the iconic singer would have seemed daunting for anyone, yet Malek has triumphed dazzling not just the enraptured audiences, but the remaining members of the band themselves. On the other hand, Christian Bale totally transformed every aspect of his physical being for the role of Dick Cheney in Vice. He specifically gained tons of weight and reaped the benefits with a comedy Golden Globe and a Critics' Choice Award. Although, gaining weight does not necessarily guarantee that you'll get results, as we've seen from Viggo Mortensen's portrayal as Tony Lip. The actor lost out on the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice Awards, and SAG Awards, so it's highly unlikely he wins the Oscar, which is really upsetting for the fans, who were shocked and pleased by his performance at the same time. Sure, it might have been hard to accept him the way he looked in the Green Book after his iconic role of the sexy, masculine Aragorn from The Lord of the Rings. Bradley Cooper and Willem Dafoe will probably not be in the list of winners this time either, since they also previously lost the winning position to either Bale or Malik. Nevertheless, their roles in The Star is Born and At Eternity's Gate accordingly are definitely worth seeing. Nominees for the Best Actress Lady Gaga is the one on everybody's lips this year thanks to Bradley Cooper's piece, The Star is Born. Gaga proved to be a perfect fit for the role, shredding her extravagant and elaborate stage image to portray a humble, down-to-earth aspiring artist yearning for her big break. Her biggest win on the circuit so far is a tie for Best Actress at the Critics' Choice Awards, which gives her a puncher's chance, because in four of the last five years, the Critics' Choice Movie Award winner for Best Actress also scored the Oscar. So go, go, Gaga! Although, it's hard to see Glenn Close not winning the Best Actress after her win at the Golden Globes. Will she repeat the DiCaprio story and only win her first Oscar after not one, not two, not even three or four, but six whole nominations? All signs are showing that this year is her lucky year, as even the Actors Guild saw Glenn as the best for her leading role in the drama film Wife. Olivia Colman is certainly deserving of her first career Oscar nomination for portraying the frail Queen Anne in the period costume drama The Favourite. Critics praised it for its unique approach to a classic genre, and it's doing well with the precursors. But Olivia's SAG loss is monumental and puts her at a distinct disadvantage. Anyhow, we're moving on to the next nominee, Yalitza Aparicio. Most people expected Alfonso Cuarón's Roma to be a big player at this year's Oscars, but few would have pegged it for acting nominations especially when Roma is actually Aparicio's first acting credit. Nevertheless, she was able to deliver a captivating performance in a role that bucks traditional trends in movies, although it is doubtful that she will carry the golden statue with her. Melissa McCarthy as the bitter literary forger in Can You Ever Forgive Me finished off the category as well. Seems like such a change of pace finally got Melissa's career back on track. The star received lots of appreciation from critics and fans for her role as an author who falls into a get-rich-quick scheme by forging letters she claims to be from famous people. Still, it looks like she will go home empty-handed this time due to the strong contest in the category. Nominees for Best Supporting Actor Given the fact that Mahershala Ali has already been walking away with most of the major trophies, seems the actor is primed to repeat his win for Moonlight two years ago, leaving his fellow colleagues on the list almost no chance. Although Richard E. Grant as McCarthy's weird friend in Can You Ever Forgive Me, and Adam Driver as a Jewish cop who goes undercover with the Ku Klux Klan in Black Klansmen are still trying to compete with Ali at every turn. Nevertheless, Driver has spent much of this award season watching Ali take home Best Supporting Actor trophies, so it looks like he'll have to wait until next time. The biggest surprise for this category is, no doubt, Sam Elliott. After 50 years of constant roles in Hollywood, Elliott has finally earned his first Oscar nomination. This year, he enacted a crucial and emotional supporting role in one of the biggest movies of the year, A Star is Born. And lastly, we get to Sam Rockwell with his twangy George W. Bush in Vice. The fan-favorite character actor finally got the dues many felt he deserved last year with his Oscar-winning feature in three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. 
Although this year, out of the five Academy nominees, he had the worst luck in the precursors, including a snub at SAG. Nominees for the Best Supporting Actress It's time to take a look at who the leading contenders for Best Supporting Actress are. Amy Adams is an Academy darling, but can never seem to secure the win. Over the course of her career, she's amassed a total of five nominations. This time in Vice, she delivers a strong performance as Dick Cheney's wife, Lynn and most predict that she will finally take home her elusive Oscar in the supporting category. Still, she's got a strong list of competitors. For instance, Stone, who is already a winner for La La Land. And now with her darkly comedic role in The Favorite, she is definitely stepping on Adam's toes. The Favorite also gave the Oscars another nominee in the form of Rachel Weisz. Much like Stone, Weisz was also nominated for the biggest awards for her performance as Lady Sarah. Coincidentally, she is also an Academy Award winner, taking home Best Supporting Actress in 2005 for The Constant Gardener. What is left to say? Seems the director Yorgos Lanthimos really knows how to get the best out of his cast. Three main roles, and all of them are nominees. Despite the fact that Regina King didn't get a SAG or British Academy of Film nomination, still, the Globe winner is destined for the winner's circle for If Beale Street Could Talk, in which she plays the strong-willed mother of the heroine, trying to free her wrongfully imprisoned son-in-law. Marina de Tavira as the matriarch and Alfonso Cuarón's Roma ended up being a surprise nominee. Frankly speaking, all of the nominees for the supporting role have pretty high chances as the SAG Awards ended up giving their Best Supporting Actress prize to Emily Blunt for A Quiet Place. Yep, a performance that didn't even get into the list of Academy nominees. Nominees for the Best Director Let's start with Alfonso Cuarón. A previous winner of this award for his work on The Breathtaking Gravity, which famously made a journalist believe it was actually shot in space. With Roma, the acclaimed filmmaker continues to perfect his craft, delivering another powerful and immersive story, with a personal touch to boot. Roma is a semi-autobiographical work that takes inspiration from Cuarón's own experiences growing up in Mexico City. Cuarón has already searched ahead of his competition this year by winning all main awards so far. Obviously, these statistics do not guarantee that Cuarón is poised to emerge with his second Oscar, but he's certainly in the driver's seat right now. Another nominee, the polarizing and brilliant auteur behind works like Do the Right Thing and Malcolm X returned with arguably his finest film in years, The Black Klansman. Critics were highly impressed by Lee's mastery at balanced yet wildly different tones, as the film bounced between the humor and horror of Ron Stallworth's situation frequently. The film is also noteworthy for being a timely slice of social commentary, with Lee's bold choices in the ending paying off in a meaningful way. Another nominee for the Best Director is Adam McKay, with the biopic centering around former U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney. This picture shows that McKay did some excellent work. Vice received the most polarizing reviews, but, as we know from The Big Short, the Academy is a fan of McKay's, so it stands to reason that he might find himself amongst the winners. Let's move on to the next nominee. Anyone familiar with Lanthimos' filmography know he's an acquired taste that doesn't appeal to everyone, which isn't always the best recipe for success at the Oscars, but he has his fair share of fans in the Academy. This time, he is telling the story of a budding rivalry between two younger women for the Queen's affections. Sounds intriguing, does it not? Anyway, Lanthimos isn't a sure bet for Best Director. He was snubbed for previous awards, making his case highly unlikely. The last nominee in the category is Powell Palakowski for his movie, Cold War. Palakowski already made history for Poland by winning the nation its first Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film for Ida. Could he make history again this year by becoming only the third Polish filmmaker to be nominated for Best Director and the first for a Polish language film? Well, it would be a total surprise. Nominees for the Best Picture This category is still a real mystery for the upcoming ceremony. For some time, the Peter Farrelly dramedy Green Book was the promising leader especially after it was named the best film of 2018 by the National Board of Review. The film vividly illustrates racial and LGBT discrimination, as well as presenting viewers with the main character's great acting, as well as historical drama and nice humor. Sounds like an Oscar-winning picture. But critics found that the film handled its subject matter too conventionally and played up white savior tropes. Meanwhile, Green Book was living a charmed life on the awards circuit and the Oscar should logically be the next award. But after that, the wheels flew off. Green Book is now embroiled in controversy surrounding co-writer Nick Vallelonga's 2015 tweet where he supported Donald Trump's claim that Muslims in New Jersey celebrated the September 11th World Trade Center attack. That kind of backlash is sometimes enough to derail a campaign. 
but Green Book just won the Producers Guild Award for Best Picture, squarely putting it back in the driver's seat for the Oscar. Besides Green Book, the biggest awards victor was definitely Bradley Cooper's remake of A Star Is Born. Unsurprisingly, A Star Is Born has also been a massive hit with various industry guilds. The film is by no stretch a bad movie, and as a directorial debut, certainly promises some interesting things to come from Bradley Cooper. But it seems like the movie just does not have enough of the Oscar's necessary problematic drama, aside from the alcoholism of Cooper's character. Like A Star Is Born, Black Klansman has also made it through award season without much pushback, indicating it has a lot of support. After decades of delivering quality and influential films, the Academy may decide now is the right time for Lee to get his recognition, though it's more likely that Lee has a better chance at Best Director, and A Star Is Born or Green Book takes picture. Still, we have other contestants for the Best Picture. The track record of foreign language films cracking the Best Picture lineup isn't great, but Alfonso Cuarón's Roma could be an exception. If you're looking for an ironclad lock in your Oscar pool, Roma is definitely winning Best Foreign Language Film. As for Best Picture, that seems less likely. However, Roma's big wins at the Critics' Choice Awards certainly give it a boost. The surprise of the award season, the Freddie Mercury biopic overcame its lukewarm reviews and is officially in the race. Bohemian Rhapsody got plenty of love from the guilds and globes, but what hurts its odds of winning the Oscar is the fact that the film missed out at the Directors Guild Awards. Besides Bohemian Rhapsody, Vice is the Oscar contender that fared the worst with critics, polarizing pundits with McKay's distinct and bold stylistic choices. It is unlikely for the Academy to choose a film that is so politically controversial, though seeing the Black Panther as a nominee for the Best Picture is very surprising. The Academy has a fickle history with superhero movies. None have ever been nominated for Best Picture. The critics say that the director of The Panther, Ryan Coogler, transcended the whole genre and made the film a phenomenon. But Coogler missing a DGA nomination essentially prevents Panther from winning at all. And in his case, the nomination itself is a huge victory. Lanthimos' strange sensibilities mean the favorite is not, well, the favorite of the 2019 Oscars. Even though the picture received lots of nominations, it just does not fit within the framework of the Oscars' taste, especially with such contestants beside. And what are your predictions for the Oscar race? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching! Check out these other great stories from Asa, and subscribe for new videos about your favorite stars.